How many willies, Geordie? How many willies were right up you? <laughs> hey, Michelle. What's poppin', mighty guy? What did you just say? What's poppin'? What's poppin', mighty guy? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> this was something my daughter said when she was trying to do like a surfer dude voice. She made it up. What's poppin', mighty guy? Mighty guy. Okay. Mighty all right. guy. Do you know what? I might I might Use throw it. that at a couple of the uh, skaters in town. Let's see what they say. Snowboarding. Next time you're doing that, just pop that in. What's poppin', mighty guy? Give them a fist pump. That sounds great. I'm not going to look like a big loser. You won't look stupid. They'll think that you're really hip and down with the kids. Yeah. They're going to be like, oh, man, that's what all the cool kids say in London. We've got to start saying it. That is the cool thing. Exactly. We start it. Hey, guys, this is where you heard it first. By the way, eavesdroppers, welcome to the show this week with Michelle and Geordie. She's Michelle. I'm Geordie. You're eavesdropping. Hello. We're eavesdropping. Well, you're eavesdropping on us. We're just talking. We're just talking shit. That's right. And you get, you're the lucky people who get to hear it. Speaking of that, Michelle, there's been a few mentions to me from the general public about how much they enjoy our eavesdropping podcast. Tell me all about it. Well, first of all, we've had someone called Sophie. Hi, Sophie. You get a shout out, okay? Not a shout out because there was a bit of confusion. She contacted us on Instagram. And our reply to her was, thank you for listening. You'll get a shout out. And I think there was a mild offence going on for Sophie. She wasn't quite sure. I don't think she'd ever heard it or seen it written down. Didn't realise that it's actually spelt shart art. <laughs> but once it was explained, uh, she was back on board. I thought we'd lost the listener as soon as we'd, we'd gained her almost, Michelle, I have to say. But she's enjoying the show. She wanted to know... Which one of us lives in Australia and which one lives in England? Well, neither of us live in Australia, Sophie. We both met in London, didn't we, Michelle? We did because I had a boyfriend who knew you for when you were living in Australia and we begged to sleep on your floor and we did. And since then, we've had a beautiful friendship over many years. I don't remember you begging, but I'm sure it would have been a free-for-all back in those days. Beg, please, Jordan, (laughs) please. Please let us, and then please let us stay longer than we said. And then we just look, you know, <laughs> your house, your floor was, it was a flop house. You still are very welcoming. You always. It's welcome still a people. flop house, as you will find out next week, Michelle, when you're back in the UK, and we're back together again. Can't wait! It'll be great. It's going to be fun. We'll be drinking all the daiquiris. We'll be doing all the podcasts. We'll be doing lots of fun. I tell you what, eavesdroppers, if you're interested in seeing any particular. Because, you know, if you follow us on Instagram, you'll see all of our videos that we do mm. to promote each episode each week. Maybe Michelle and I can do a little Q&A or something together. You'll cool. have to ask us some questions, mind you. And you do that by emailing us at hello at eavesdropping.com. No G. It's uh, eavesdroppingpodcast.com. But it's okay. Thank you. <laughs> Don't ever listen to me. Don't ever listen to me when I'm telling you things. Always listen to Michelle. Show note, Shelley. She's got the goods. I do. Show note, Shelley. Jesus Christ. Wealth of information. Absolutely. Now, going forth as well, there are some more shout outs to give. And that is to all of my work colleagues who are now eavesdroppers. Oh, I love that. I love it. I've got a shout out to give to Ida, who listened throughout her week of COVID. A shout out to Nikki, who listened just because. Oh, Just because. Now, they both listened to different episodes. Ida really enjoyed the science episode, the (laughs) multiverse. She found she learnt something and she had a laugh. Oh, well, what more could you want? I have to say, Ida, I'm very nervous that you learnt things that might not actually be true because <laughs> I was extremely confused during that episode. My science brain is basically mush. Worse than a giant eating a Malteser, but there you go. There were some really good, really relatable what would you call them? Metaphors, I suppose, Michelle, <laughs> that you use to describe science. And I think it worked. And if you haven't heard that episode yet, go back and listen. It's about, I don't know, episode 22, 23 of season three. I can't remember. I'll put a link in the show notes. Put the link in, Shelley, show notes. And then Nikki listened to the 
awful story that I told about Joe Chinque's murder oh. in Canberra yes. in the 90s, mm. Anu Singh. That's a heartbreaker, but so interesting. I mean, the, the psychology behind that still fascinates me to this day. Speaking of previous episodes, last week's episode, Michelle, when I did a deep dive into Whitley Strieber and mm. his book Communion, yes. I've got to say, put the willies right up me. <laughs> how many willies, Geordie? How many willies were right up you? <laughs> well, I went camping in an orchard and I almost couldn't bear to walk around at night. I was so scared of an alien invasion or a little green person poking their head around the corner of the door like they did for Whitley Streeper. I got the fear like I did when I first read that book back in the 80s. Well, I, I, find, that, I find that quite exciting because... I think when you're scared, you're in a heightened sense where you can become visited. Because I don't want to be visited. They know you don't want it, so they're going to come. Oh, my God. <laughs> Since then, I have gravitated towards a few more abductee stories. And I think in the future, if people are interested, I might like to tell them. Well, I've got a few things for you today. Geordie. Have you? Yes, I do. But before we launch, we've got to remind people this is the last possible week that you can support us, dear eavesdroppers, for the big push, the British Podcast Awards. The winners are revealed on Saturday, this coming Saturday. So basically what she's trying to say is please vote for us BritishPodcastAwards.com slash vote. There you put in eavesdropping uh, with no G with the apostrophe, our little faces will pop up and you can vote for us. It is the last moment. It's the last gasp of voting. And please, we want to win. We want to get listeners' choice because we know you love us. We love you. If we do, we'll give you things. We don't know what yet, but we'll give them to you. Lots of things. Also, I believe that you have to verify it with your email address that you have voted. They'll send you a little, is this you? And you have to say yes, yes. in order to complete the voting process. Get your mum to do it. Get your grand to do it. Get your brother to do it. Get your kids to do it. Just bloody do it, please. Anyone with an email address, support us. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll all get a free beer coaster at the end, a Ben Mendelsohn brown lemonade beer coaster. There's an idea for some merch, That Michelle. is a great idea. Do you think Ben will mind? I don't think so. I mean, he might sue us for copyright of his <laughs> vice. You never know. I mean, Ben doesn't even know that he drinks brown lemonade or however our song goes. Well, should we tell him? I'd love to tell him. I would yeah. absolutely love. Let's get in touch with Ben Mendelsohn. I'd love to say hello to Ben Mendelsohn. Quite frankly, I'd love to sit on his knee. What? I would. I would love to sit on Ben Mendelsohn's knee. I'm just what, telling you. What, are you some kind of Christmas elf? Honestly, it's so funny that you're talking about Ben and elves and all these sorts of things because I've got some stuff for you this week. Oh, is Michelle about to deep dive into some deep delving, elving, <laughs> elving stories? Look, there's today. actually no elves. That's a red herring right there. Like a Scandi drama. <laughs> I love a good <laughs> Scandi drama. That's actually my life because I'm with a Scandi. The Scandi drama every day. It is. That's my life. Sorry. But we had a request from a loyal eavesdropper. So shout out to Steph from Sydney, a.k.a. my Your sister. sister. Shout out, shout out, you're getting a shout out. Now, she wanted me to investigate rare sightings. And I'm saying that in inverted commas because I didn't actually know what she meant. I just went with it and I'm going to deep dive into a few rare sightings and unexplained mysteries. Oh, more mysteries. It's the month of mysteries, Michelle. Oh, all the M's. It's another mystery. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Wessex Way monster. Yes. Have you heard about this? No. Unless it's a haunted bag of soot. No, <laughs> it's a little bit more exciting than that. Because the way you said yes, I thought she knows this. She knows about the Wessex Way no. monster. I might know it because... It sounds like something I would know. I know. It's right up your street. Well, look, all right. Yeah. I'm going to take you back to the night of November 14 in 2007 Ooh. to a particular stretch of highway called Wessex Way, which is on the A338 in Dorset. Isn't it? Dorset. Is that how you do a Dorset accent? Dorset. Uh, Dorset. <laughs> in Dorset. 
Anyway. No. Dorset. <laughs> is it West Country? It's not West Country. It is. It borders Somerset. <laughs> Dorset, Somerset, okay. General Gorge. That's my George Michael impersonation. Oh, yeah, when he went, <laughs> when he lost his mind that time. One of those times. He didn't lose his mind. He had foreign accent syndrome when he woke up after an illness. Yes, illness. That's a previous episode. Mm. I know. I'll have to try and link to that somehow. So, what's got the internet? All a titter, Geordie. A titter? A titter. It's all a titter. It's a little piece of traffic surveillance footage captured by a government closed-circuit traffic camera. Yeah. What, what is it? Well, in the footage, which I have seen, by the way, you can tell it's late at night because it's all that kind of night cam footage. And the camera, like I said, traffic cam, it's filming traffic on both sides of the carriageway. And then all of a sudden, you see this creature crossing four lanes of traffic across the dual carriageway, jumping over the central crash barrier just what? avoiding being hit by a car. And then, what? literally as fast as it appeared, it leaps off into the night and out of sight of the cam footage. Okay, right. This sounds very, very familiar. I feel like I've seen this footage. I feel like I've seen it on something like the Osbournes want to believe. <laughs> where Ozzy Osbourne and family all look into paranormal film clips. I also think I've read about it in the Fortean Times as well. When I was investigating the Ruskington horror, I think this may have come up. Very possibly. There was traffic on the road at the time, wasn't there? Loads of traffic. It's going zip, zip, zip. Four lanes, zip, zip. And this thing, did anyone else report seeing it? No. I mean, I'm not joking. I've seen this footage. It's zoom. It's that quick. It's across oh. all four lanes. Is it like a shadow? No, it's not. And and look, you need to see this footage. And again, I will put a link show notes. in the show notes. Yeah. But without seeing it, you're probably thinking, what the fuck is this? Because yeah. it looks like an animal, but... Solid? Yes. I'm going to suspend my sceptical mind here because... Your sceptical mind? You're the one who thinks that no one went to the moon. They bloody didn't but anyway we're not (laughs) (laughs) moving on from that it's a creature and it has characteristics that look both animal and human wow yeah i know i don't like that no and to be honest most people on the internet they're saying that at first glance this creature looks like a deer but it ain't no fucking spring hill jack what? I said Spring Hill Jack. Well, yeah, I, I heard you. I'm just like... wondering what that is. We've spoken about it before, but I'm wondering if this is what people have seen in the past in olden times and named it Spring Hill Jack, part human, part animal. Okay. Interesting. Carry on. Sorry to interrupt, but it just came to me in a flash of inspiration. People say it's a deer, it's a deer. It's not a fucking deer because the no. legs are too long to be deer legs. And also the way it runs... It does not look like a deer at all. It actually almost looks like a human, but a human that's kind of on all fours, but it's got these long spindly legs. And in fact... I don't like it. No, it's not nice. And I did read one account from a guy called Shane72634, and that's his handle, not his actual name. He's from Norfolk <laughs> in England. Idiot. And what? I'm just... Because I've said things like this before and you've been like, that's his name. And I'm like, it's his goddamn handle. But anyway, just to clarify. So uh, Shane, he's from Norfolk, Norfolk, can't speak, Norfolk in England. Norfolk. Norfolk. And he calls himself a deer stalker, whatever that is. Right. And he has experience of deers and he disagrees with this conclusion that it's a deer. Right. So he says it is, in fact, most certainly not a deer and that the creature in the video cannot be a deer. And he says, and these are his words, by the way, I can definitively say it jumped elegantly like a deer would. However, look closely. Its hind legs are not inverted as in having hocks like a deer, gotcha. dogs or horses. Yeah. The hind legs are clearly like human legs. I.e. So bend at knees. the knees. Yeah. Yes. 
Whatever it is, he says, it has a shadow. It's very large in status and behaved like an animal would crossing a road. Well, do you know what? After I read that, I went and had a closer look at this footage to see if I could see any knees. And honestly, even with my glasses on, and I quite frankly need my glasses on a lot these days, yeah, I could not see any knees. So well done, dear Stalker Shane, for seeing wow. that little detail. But what I will say is that although the footage is of quite poor quality, the hind legs of this thing do kind of bend as if there is a knee involved. Yeah, yeah. And they don't look like deer legs. Plus, I think the shoulders and the upper body of this thing don't look like a deer's body. You know, it's too big. Yeah. So so like a torso of a man? A man's torso? I'm just looking up Spring Hill Jack right now. Oh, yeah. Spring Hill Jack, we have spoken about it before. It's um, an entity of English folklore in the Victoria era, and all the sightings go back from 1837. I think the latest one was 1904. But the people who've seen him springing about mm. do say that he looks horrific. He's got clawed hands and re- red balls of fire for eyes. Okay. Um, there's a black cloak, though, and a helmet, all sorts of outfits. It sounds like he's got lots of clothes on and a devil-like aspect. Blue okay. white flames coming out. All sorts. I think it's gone. they've Jesus. gone a bit nuts. And he bounces about from in London, bouncing from uh, from chimney to chimney top. And I've just seen something that caught my eye, maybe for a future episode. It, he was also affiliated with the Peckham Ghost, whatever that is. Oh, I love anything in Peckham. Okay, look, I'm going to just... Pin that. I'm just going to rule out right now that it's a spring bock jack or whatever you called it. Spring-heeled jack. Spring-heeled jack. Because this does not have a top hat and a fucking cape, all right? And an oil skin, There's, no. And no flames coming out of its eyes. It, I mean, it's a spindly thing that looks half human, half animal, right? It sounds like Stranger Things, all the horrible things that you see in Stranger Things. Maybe. But I am going to right now rule out that it's a deer. In the first series, there's kind of like that half man, half flower thing. Oh, I hate Put a it. pin in that because I've got some creepy things coming up for you. Oh. So... When I was investigating this, there are all sorts of theories floating out there, around and about on the internet about this. Some yep. people are saying it's a skinwalker. Now, uh. a skinwalker, if you don't know, it's a Navajo shape-shifting witch that disguises itself as a deformed animal, like a wolf or a bear. And skinwalkers, according to legend, yep. are truly fucking terrifying because they are a creature that can take on the appearance of whatever its last victim was, but not precisely. What does that remind you of? Ben Mendelsohn. Yeah. And this is why I was like, I can't believe she's bringing Ben up because that just absolutely reminded me of The Outsider. The reason why we started this podcast. One of the reasons. I mean, because we yes. loved him in that. We absolutely loved him in that. So people who don't know, it's uh, like Michelle just said, it was out in 2020. It's an adaptation of a Stephen King story starring Australian actor Ben Mendelsohn as the cop who's trying to track down what's happening to in his little town. And this kind of thing is mentioned, skinwalkers. It's horrific, it's scary, it's spooky, but it's also gripping. It's not one of those silly ones like Under the Dome by Stephen King. That's yes, but ridiculous. it does get a bit silly. But just I'll do a recap. Outside begins with an investigation into the murder of a young boy. But bit by bit, as you said, it gets supernatural. And in the end, Ben, who's a level-headed cop, starts to question everything he's ever believed in. As he cracks open a brown lemonade. And I basically nicked that synopsis off IMDb. Where well done. I did see that Ben's got loads of things coming up in production. You, ben. Now, there's a mini series called Secret Invasion, which is a Marvel thing where Ben is playing the lead baddie. And oh. I'm not into the whole Marvel thing, so I'd probably give that one a miss. Sorry, Ben. But... He's also in a film called Misanthrope, which is about a cop who's recruited by the FBI to help track down a murderer. Classic Mendels, right? Classic Mendels. We, we'll back that one, Mendels. We will. However, what I'm really excited about is there's a new series being shot called The New Look. 
that's obviously a cheap store, clothing store in the yeah. UK. This yeah. movie is where Ben is playing none other than Christian Dior. Oh, wow. Honestly, can you believe our Ben is going to be playing Christian Dior? It just thrills How me. Fantastic. I know. So I'm very excited for that. I'm thinking of Issa Laurent. Issa Laurent. I'm thinking about him. He lived in Morocco, had those beautiful gardens, didn't he? So it's not him, like the, the dapper Yves Saint Laurent with his suits and his big floppy ties and his glasses. Christian Dior, I can't think what he looks like. Well, apparently this series is going to be all about some rivalry between him and Coco Chanel. I think it's going oh, to be fantastic. great. I know. So I was very excited by that. Bit of history. Bit of history. But back to the skinwalkers, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, fascinating. Honestly, people are saying that this creature running over the Wessex Way is a skinwalker. So oh I don't know about that. But another theory is this thing crossing the road is a Wendigo. Have you heard of that? What? A Wendigo. No. So it's a folkloric Native American creature that eats its victims at night. Now, Ooh. I actually don't think it's that, but what do I know? Who knows? Why is it all these Native American things when we're in Blighty? We're in England, right? That, that's the story. It's Wessex Way is in England, right? Yes. Yeah, of course. I mean, all these things have like come over from America and South America and wherever to like hang oh, out on I the see. A338. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like COVID. Like COVID. But other people think it could be just a feral human. What? Oh, my God, that's fascinating. And do you know what? This actually reminded me of the story we did of Oksana Malaya, dog girl from the Ukraine, which we covered in a previous episode. We did. Where she was running on all fours and she actually did look like a dog. However, I mean, unless you're really a human feral, feral human, (laughs) I I don't know. I don't know. Would you... Would you attempt to cross a road? I mean, why? And honestly, when you Is see there this water on the other side, when you see this footage, it's so fucking fast. There's no way it's a human. Absolutely no way. Because another theory out there is it could be a chupacabra. Now that was also in the, the outsider. outsider as well. I know, I know. Giving the game away. But seriously, what the hell is a chupacabra doing? Losing its way from Puerto Rico and ending up on the A338 in Dorset. Again, it gets attached to a human host and comes over on the oh. on the planes during COVID. I forgot about that bit, yes, because I was going to explain a little bit about Chupacabra, but yes, maybe, maybe, maybe. So it is a scary Latin American legend. I will say legend because we don't really know, but it's basically... I don't think it's true. I know, it sounds a bit weird because bit they out, say it's a there. creature that attacks animals and consumes their blood, which mm. honestly sounds a bit like my part-time cat. But anyway. It, We've talked about it before. We have. We have talked about it. And it's, it's derived, the name Chupacabra comes from Chupa, which means to suck, and Cabra, which means goat. So it's basically a goat yeah. sucker, right? Yeah. And it's thought to be kind of the Latino equivalent of Sasquatch. So people mm. are saying, oh, it could be a chupacabra, but I don't bloody know because it doesn't look like it has fur and I think chupacabras have fur. And apparently the chupacabra, do you remember, has spikes running down its spine mm. and this doesn't have that. Yes, but does it, Michelle, because is it real and do they look exactly as people imagined? I mean, I'm thinking back to Spring Hill Jack already and we have covered every single one of these creatures. <laughs> you let in, go. <laughs> in, no, because all of these things were mentioned in a previous episode. Chupacabra, I think even the Wendigo was mentioned and I forgot about it. Could and be. the Spring Hill Jack, that was all in a previous episode, probably from season one or two. And I think it could have been about shapeshifters or something like that. I don't know. Or maybe it was about the, the abom- abominable. I can't remember. But are they real? And if they are... Do they look the way that people say they do? Because I think Spring Hill Jack, going back to him with his top hat and his flailing cloak of whatever, oil skin and his blazing eyes, I think that these things just get added to and added to because of hysteria, rumour, people getting excited. Same with Chupacabra. Oh, we've seen it. The goat sucker. Yeah, it's got the spikes down the back. Or... What, what was the other thing you mentioned earlier? The skinwalker, how it kind of comes back a little malformed. All of these things started somewhere and I think it's probably someone's imagination. And then other people kind of jump on board and 
create their own version of this fantasy figure. Well, like I said, these things often start in native folklore. And I think that they're then appropriated and modernised. Exactly. But people are scared and people really do believe these things exist, you know, in certain cultures. Yeah, so true. maybe no one has seen it, but I don't think we can sort of poo-poo them because in certain cultures, just the way like the Icelandic people believe in the Hulda folk, yeah. they may never have seen it, but it's their belief. So I personally think it sounds a bit bullshit, but... You know, these people, it's a cultural thing and they're trying to say that maybe it's headed to Dorset. So I, d- I don't know. I don't oh, know. Oh, that's a shame because I love going to Dorset, especially at this time of year. But Michelle, <laughs> well, keep an eye out. what about the fact that it just could be a hoax? I'm getting to uh. that. <laughs> so I've got a few theories I want to talk you through first before we get to the the obvious idea, the that, obvious it could idea be a hoax. that it could be a hoax, yes. Because people are also saying it could be a werewolf. You know, that thing you could not remember last week. <laughs> werewolf. <laughs> the thing about, the thing where. That you, beast of legend. The wolf that turns into a person and vice versa. Yes, the werewolf. Of course. How could I forget? Yes, of course. But they're covered in fur, werewolves, right? They're, they're meant to be all hairy. And this thing isn't hairy. So I don't think it's that. And people are saying it just could be a mangy dog. Well, you keep saying that there's no hair. I haven't seen the footage, but I'm assuming. Honestly, it, because it's night cam as well, it, it looks a bit weird. Google it. I'm also going to point you in the direction of another theory. You're going to like this one. People out there think it could be a creature called the rake. Have you heard of the rake? No. Let me tell you a bit oh about the rake. Oh, God, I can't wait. So apparently it's a pale flesh-coloured creature with a slender body, long Ew. claws and large pupilless eyes pupilless how the fuck does it say then i don't know they say it's a bipedal which means it walks on two legs yeah at people and that it is often seen on all fours stalking its prey which a little bit like the wessex way creature sounds a little bit human a little bit animal but i'm sorry to say it's a little bit Bullshit. made up because, <laughs> yeah, when I investigated the rake, turns out it's a made up monster from Creepy Pasta. Yeah, oh. so along with Slenderman, the rake is just Bullshit. a figment of someone's imagination. Yeah. But like you said, could this just be a big old fucking phony baloney hoax? Well, well, I just looked at it actually, Michelle. It looked. It do- doesn't look like it's hairy, and it did, in four leaps, get across four lanes of traffic. It must be huge. Yes, it looks tiny on the fi- on the video, but it must be enormous to do four but jumps. It must be massive. So, first of all, I know that it could be a hoax. It really could be, but it's traffic cam footage from the UK's government department for transport. To me, and you having seen that footage now, it actually looks pretty Mm. genuine. And I also read online that some kind of super sleuthy paranormal investigators actually did go to the Department for Transport and they were told that that footage is Mm. genuine. I'm kind of erring on the side of actual footage rather than doctored footage because it doesn't look like Photoshop. It doesn't look like fake CCTV. But saying that... The cars on the road, they're not braking. They don't even seem to be reacting to the creature. So they're not seeing it. So some people on the internet are saying, for that reason alone, the footage is fake. But you saw it. It's so fucking fast. If they're not even seeing it, because it's it's across really quickly, either the drivers aren't seeing it or they don't have time to react. Mm. I don't know. Wow. I'm thinking... I'm thinking and I'm thinking, is it something like a time slip? Alien. Or an alien. Are you thinking it's an alien? I wasn't actually thinking that. Because I'm thinking it's no, an alien. I was wondering if it was some sort of interdimensional slip or leak that we often talk about. Do you know what? There are there are some people saying that it could be some kind of time slip, some kind of time mm. leak. But, you know, for me, obviously, you know, I love a good old alien sighting. And don't we? Yeah. So, what if this thing was a lost alien, or what if it's an alien pet that's like somehow dropped down and crossing the A three thirty eight? I don't know. That just reminds me of that film Cloverfield, 
where that Godzilla thing is yes. dropping all those bits, those fleas off it, and it's killing people when it when they land. They like horrifically killing people on the street. Ugh, I know it's a disaster. I won't sleep. Of course you won't. But you know what? There was someone out there saying, "Oh, it looks like a kangaroo. It doesn't look like a fucking kangaroo." They've obviously never seen a kangaroo. The fast jumping. The the giant leaps, yeah. But they yeah. also have those legs like a dog. The what did you call it before? Orthopedal. What did you call it? Bipedal. The, the dog leg kind of shape, rather than two legs, two bones with a knee in the middle. They've got that curved yeah. bone with a big long flat bottom. I'm just going to tell you, no one's any closer to understanding or putting a label on what the hell that thing okay. was. I'm going to put. A link in the show notes. Go for it. You can see the Wessex Way monster. monster. You can all decide for yourself. Get in touch. I'm going to look at it again. It's fascinating. It's really, that's mind-bending actually, Michelle. Well done for finding that. Well, get in touch at hello at eavesdroppingpodcast.com and tell, tell us what you think because I really have no clue what that could be. No idea. She's got no idea. No idea. We've got no idea. No idea. There is no idea between no us. No idea. No idea. No idea. On the theme of monsters, yeah. I was obviously like just looking around for rare sightings of things and I came across this weird story that started out as a strange sighting but it kind of morphed into something else. And it all began in July 2008 in Montauk. Hang on. Isn't that the same year or the year after the Wessex Way monster? No, the Wessex Way monster. 2007. Oh, it was 2007. Oh, well done. I didn't even make that connection. Well, this is not, I don't think, the one and the same. It did not pop off from Dorset to Montauk. But... Montauk, we've been talking a lot about that recently. The Stranger Things episode, yeah. Well, yes, we talked about it in the Stranger Things episode. We talked about the Montauk Project, which if you haven't heard about it is, or listened to the episode, it's an underground secret military base in Montauk. Apparently. Where the US military, no, well, they definitely, they're guarding it. The US military are guarding this site. So there's fucking something there. Okay. They apparently, this is the bit that's in question, were conducting experiments into time travel and mind control. And this is where they apparently have experimented on homeless children. And honestly, go back and listen to this episode because there's a lot of info in there. But you mentioned Montauk last week. Did I? With Whitley Streber. Yes, you did. You did. You said Montauk, everything's happening in Montauk. I can't remember what you said about it, but you Uh did mention it. I thought you might remember. Weird. Can't remember. Well, this is sort of different, but kind of, sort of similar in a way. As I said at at the top of this, July 2008, there are three girls called Rachel Goldberg, Courtney Fruin and Jenna Hewitt. They're walking along the beach at Ditch Plains, which is a popular surf spot in Montauk. When they see this mysterious dead animal carcass, washed up on the beach have you ever seen anything dead washed up on the beach yes I have I have and I've I think I've told this on the podcast before as well because I lived on a beach I once found well once we had a baby shark that we had to try and get back out to sea Mm -hmm. and I don't know if we succeeded or not I've blanked that from my memory perhaps it ended in horror (laughs) and then there was the time I was walking along and I found a dead kangaroo with its bones stripped from uh, like the the joint to the to the foot like the leg one leg was stripped to the bone okay was there any Bush? skin no skin was there any fur no fur no skin from the part that was completely ripped stripped so it's a full it's a, it's a wallaby rather than a kangaroo. Kangaroos are huge. Wallabies are probably the things that you think about when you think of Australia. They're the ones that you tend to see more of. They're slightly smaller. Not tiny, mm. but they're slightly smaller. We have a lot of wallabies. But back in those days when I was living in Australia, this must be when I was about 13 or something. Yeah. There weren't as many living in urban areas. Now, I would class where I lived as urban, despite the fact that it was just a little kind of village. Hamlet on the beach. Hamlet yeah. on the beach, Yeah. 
now there's tons, but back then there wasn't because obviously all the housing that's been built, they've got nowhere else to go. So they're coming into a little bit like urban foxes here in, in London. This kangaroo, it was weird to see it on my side of the beach because on the other side, which was Long Beach and much more bushy, you would see, and Durris and all those places, you would see a lot more kangaroos, like wandering around people's gardens and whatnot. You didn't have it on my side, which was Casey's Beach. This kangaroo, I just assumed somehow it had been attacked or or killed and ended up in the water, God knows how, and had Mm. floated across. That was what I assumed, but I was only, like I said, a kid at the time. But the fact that its whole leg was exposed... Yeah. No gristle. I was red. It was red and bone. But the rest of the animal was intact. Fur, gorgeous, pretty, apart from that part. Horrifying. I, I'm trying to rack my brain. I definitely know that I've seen massive fish washed up on beaches, which look absolutely grim. I actually think I have seen a dead dog, Ew. which is really upsetting. Birds, you always see birds, those birds. Those big mutton birds. Yeah, and they always look bloated and gross and just yeah. stuff you don't want to look at. And honestly, this thing is something you don't want to look at either. Crikey. Because when these three girls, they went up and had a close-up look at it. And they took a picture because they had no fucking clue what they were looking at. And I've seen this photo. It's this creature and it is quite disgusting so the reason I was asking you when you're talking about the wallaby if it had fur or not yeah this has no fur it's almost like transparent skin and honestly it, it, it makes me feel sick even saying it it looks like it's been a bit cooked in the sun because it's got like a slightly roasted look to oh, it. Oh, God, Michelle. Yeah, it's awful. And the back of the creature. Oh, fuck, I've just looked at it. Oh, okay, well, I'm going to describe it a bit so people listening can sort of hear it, hear what it looks like. It sort of looks like it's got dog legs, but the front legs to me look a bit like pig trotters. But the weirdest thing is the skull, because to me it looks like a pit bull but with a Crossed beak, with, a, with sharp teeth. With a rhinoceros by the look of it. Well, I'm not joking. I mean, it's truly terrifying because the body is kind of stocky, but it has this longish, thin tail. And on the trotter claw hand things, it sort of looks like there are fingers. It's just weird. But the skull definitely looks like it's got a face. Yeah, it's not good. I thought it was a wombat when I first opened up the Google just now. In Montauk. Yeah. Well, do you know what? Put a pin in that because I'm going to get to some theories. When you looked at the face, you saw that the face is kind of short and squishy. And the teeth are disgusting. Yeah. They're only on the bottom of the jaw. Mm-hmm. And there's just one crazy... Yeah, it's <laughs> like an underbite. <laughs> and there's this one crazy tooth just sticking out at the very front of it. Unless you see it. And I'm going to put a link. Oh, man. It's hard for me to describe. The thing is, Geordie, I don't know which picture you just looked at, but there hasn't just been one of (gasps) these dead, hairless creatures wash up on the shore. Apparently, there's been loads. And I've seen pics of those too. And they also look similar to this kind of dog, pig, trottery thing that I just described. But there are also some pics that show these weird creatures. And some of them have a bit of fur on them, but they've got like, whitish skin and they and they look a bit translucent roasted yeah roasted Roasted. from the sun i know it did look a bit like like a pig on a spit or a hungy or whatever they call it and then there are these other pictures where they've got more fur on but it's harder to see their face and there are some where you can't see the face at all just this creepy white skin with these strange little claws and honestly there are so many of these pictures out there that you feel like there's got to be something to all this why are they floating up on why are they being carried away by the sea or whatever that's weird are they like lemmings throwing themselves off cliffs well you're gonna love this because there could be An explanation. It's more of a conspiracy theory, actually. I love it. Okay, here, let's hear it. So, Montauk is at the very end of Long Island. And Ditch Plains is a beach on the eastern side of Long Island. And I've got to tell you, these creatures are not just floating up to 
ditch planes. They've been floating and found on all sorts of beaches all over Long Island. There's even been one that's ended up in New York. But anyway. It's a special kind of floater. Yes. On the western side of Long Island is an island called Plum Island, which I actually think sounds gorgeous because I was thinking, oh, it's an island full of plums or, you know, other lovely fruit. But since 1954, it has been the home to a kind of low-key government research facility called Plum Island Animal Disease Centre. Now, interestingly, this this animal centre is run by the US Department of Homeland Security. Which is a bit fucking crazy because what does Homeland Security have to do with animal diseases? I don't like it. No, Michelle, you're not going to like this. darker than it could ever, ever, ever be. Really? So back in 1954, Plum Island was set up as a biological warfare testing facility where they were doing... Is this, hang on, is this true or is this... This, this is, is this fucking this true. This, this is, is true. true. Okay. Go online. Yeah. You s- actually, I've seen the okay. picture where they say this, this is, is homeland security. This is okay. fact, right? Not just hearsay. This is not a chupacabra. This is a real deal. So they set up Plum Island and this animal disease center in 1954 where they were doing genetic testing on animals. So after World War II, the US government recruited this German scientist called Dr. Eric Traub, to work on Plum Island I know that name. under what was then called Project Paperclip. Oh, yes, I know. That. Have you heard of yeah, Eric Traub? I have, yeah. You've yeah. heard about this? I've heard about Project Paperclip as well. Paperclip. Paperclip. It's hard to say. So it is hard to say. But it turns out that Eric Traub was a Nazi Ooh. scientist yeah. who was in charge of the Third Reich's virological and bacteriological warfare program during World War II. Paperclip, Operation Paperclip, was actually all about getting those scientists out of the Nuremberg trials and into the US to help further their space race war against whatever, doing some experiments, anything they learnt during their years in the Nazi regime. They wanted that. They wanted that stuff. Paperclip. It's shit. Well, do you know what? The thing was that Russia was after those German Nazi scientists mm-hmm. and there was a fucking race on to get as many as possible, not in the clutches of the Russians. The Americans were like scooping up all those Nazi mm. scientists. The thing is that Eric Traub, it's a real thing because like you say, paperclip, you can go to the United States National Archives and you will see all of these Nazi scientists experimenting with animals on Plum Island and they were also doing this experiments with diseased ticks which has led to speculation that these ticks were somehow leaked out of Plum Island and were responsible for a massive outbreak of Lyme's disease in the early 70s in Connecticut which is which as the crow flies is not far from Montauk so who knows but Eric Traub like you said, he was just one of thousands of these German scientists brought over after World War Two. It's Fort Detrick. That's why we've done it before. We've talked about yes. Fort Detrick and he was brought over to work there. That's exactly yeah. We've talked right. about this before. Which episode? Because I don't remember. I don't remember either, but we definitely talked about this before. I know we did. Fort Detrick. That was in an episode. Perhaps it's about aliens. I'm not sure. Well, I'll have to try and see if I can find the link to that. The U.S. were giving them full U.S. citizenship and these really lucrative employment contracts. So they didn't care about the dark Nazi pasts of these scientists. MK Ultra. Yep, all of that shit. That's why we talked about it. Right, okay. Sorry to interrupt, yep. Well, he was the head, he was the lab chief on um, this island of Reims in the Baltic Sea. So that's why they pulled him over to Plum Island because mm. he'd already worked on like this very kind of... Diseases. Disease disease island. Mm. And he had actually, Eric Trauber worked for um, Hitler's second in charge, Himmler, on live germ trials. So mm. it did make sense for him well, for the US government to bring Eric over for a similar thing on Plum Island. And he basically set up this military biological warfare research centre where they were, you know, doing work on animal diseases, basically setting up 
this grim fucking lab to do genetic testing on animals Gross. and biological warfare experiments on animals. <sighs> and like you said, totally connected to Fort D- Detrick, which was at the time the Army's top chemical and biological warfare facility. So knowing that Plum Island is just a few kilometres away from Montauk, it's no big stretch of the imagination mm. to think that they're still doing weird shit and that these bizarre oh creatures that are washing up on the beaches are corpses of like weird mm. genetic oh. mutant animals that have come from this biological warfare facility. It makes me so sick. So the thing is, another big part of this mystery is that even though there are loads of pictures on the internet of all these creatures, apparently they go missing before any authority can get hold of them and do proper testing on them to determine what the creatures are. The corpses go missing. Now, okay. there was apparently a website called montauk.monsters.com which when I went to look for it doesn't exist anymore. Been pulled down. Right. Apparently, and I obviously can't confirm this, but apparently when it did exist, a guy called Matt from Weathersfield in Connecticut posted a picture of one of these weird creatures who then wrote these are his words. This photo was taken in April 2009 in Old Lyme, Connecticut. The police had showed up to check out the site and shortly after there were men in unusual uniforms who came and took the specimen away. So Mm. if this is to be believed, is there a cover-up going on? Because are they still doing biological warfare animal experiments on Plum Island and Mm. these things that are washing up are just fucking Frankenstein corpses from those experiments? It doesn't bear thinking about, Michelle. I mean, my mind is blown. This is worse than any ghost or bloody... Spring Hill Jack bouncing across the motorway, isn't it? It's fucking creepy. But, you know, look, of course, there are the naysayers out there who are saying it's just a decomposed raccoon without any fur on. With that tooth. I know. And there was a guy who said, go online and look up dead raccoon with no fur and you'll see it looks exactly the same. Well, I did that and it doesn't look exactly the same. No, it doesn't. It looks nothing like it. Maybe I'm just somebody who wants to believe that there is a big mystery and a conspiracy theory behind this because it's exciting. But I do think that connection with Plum Island being so Mm. close to where these animals are, come on, you've got to think there's something in that. Now, MKUltra, obviously, that was part of Operation Paperclip. That was connected. They were declassified were they declassified i can't remember it's time for declassification across all the all of these secret experiments that have gone on since the 30s 40s 50s and beyond yeah we we need to know come on transparency people yeah i think so too we're big boys and girls now so basically people are saying and non-gender specific it's a raccoon and honestly when you look at the picture you're going to agree with me i think it's not fucking raccoon or are these creatures weird mutants coming from Plum Island. I don't know. I've got no answers. The internet has no answers. I mean, is it a giant tick or flea? What? If you blow up a flea or a tick, These right? are massive. These are like a metre or two. I know. I'm saying blow it up, make it bigger. If you experiment on a tick or a flea and turn it into massive full size or dog mm. sized. Well, I guess. I mean, who that? knows? Who knows what the hell they're doing in that lab with test tubes and all sorts of weird Nazi experiments. I have no clue. We did talk about a water bear once in another episode, didn't we? The water bears, which were those tardigrades. Oh, God, the tardigrades out in space. And they look like bears. They do, don't they? Even though they're minuscule. People, I don't know what we're looking at. I mean, obviously, people also say it could be a hoax, that there were something just to go viral. But there's just been so many of them and so many different ones. I don't know. but Like a meme or something. Yeah, get in touch if, you th- if you've got theories on it because I really have no clue what it is. Or get in touch if you've seen something re- really weird when you've been yes. on a walk or along the beachfront or whatever. Do you know what used to freak me out, Michelle, was when, again, back in Australia – when we used to go to a place called Pigeon House Mountain, which was quite a bushy area mm. outside of an area called Aladulla, you'd drive for ages, then you'd have to park your car, then you'd walk and walk and walk and you'd go up this gorgeous mountain. There was always a pair of trainers or a shoe or something up high, sometimes lots of them. What's that about? Across the power line? What does that mean? Oh, what, the shoes over the power line? Yeah. Oh, wasn't that... Always tons of them, to the point where it became a little bit creepy. Wasn't that, oh, if it's your shoe on the power line, you're a slut? 
Wasn't that what it was? I don't know. How would you know that? I don't know. I just thought like, oh, if you're a slut, they take your shoes and they throw it over the power line. Slut. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm interested to know about that. Maybe we'll follow that up for next week. That's actually not a bad idea because I've always wondered that too. I thought there couldn't be that many sluts out there. But anyway. <laughs> um, Michelle, so innocent. I am. I just think people people like having a, a fun time. What's not a fun time is that these creepy animals get in touch. Yeah. Let us know what you think. www.eavesdroppingpodcast.com Hello at eavesdroppingpodcast.com Email us a story. Share, like, all of that. Follow our social media. Like, subscribe. Instagram and Facebook. Yep, you know what you At eavesdropping underscore. You yep. got that oh, right. eavesdropping. Reggie. Yep, yep. So, Geordie. Nurse? Do you remember how I absolutely ripped the piss out of you about doing wanting to do an episode on fairies? Yeah, you hate fairies. I love them. I hate fairies. Well, I've got a story for you. About fairies. Maybe. So, there is this YouTube video that I found. It's from the 27th of November, 2008. All these things, 2007, 2008, what is going yes, on? Yes, Michelle. Anyway. And you right. finally just connected it. Just connect the, the magical dots. magical years. Yep. So, this video was uploaded by a guy called Hamish MCN. And the video starts with this black screen at the start that says, I was filming my kids in their friend's garden and they discovered this weird insect. It freaked us out. Any insectologists out there know what it is? Question mark. It's a little person with wings. Not fucking joking. (laughs) So the video starts and honestly, this video is so fucking boring. And as someone with children, you will totally understand why it's boring because It is just kids basically doing a say what you see kind of commentary for their dad in their friend's garden somewhere in the UK. It looks all lovely and gorgeous. And he's filming these three kids and they show him all the things they like to do there in the summer because this was filmed in November. So it's a cold, rainy day in the UK. And they show their dad, here's the pond where tadpoles live in summer. And here's our trampoline that we jump on in the summer. And it's wet. It's covered in water, you know. Then there's like this slide and swing set and they show him. And you can tell the dad is like fucking bored out of his brain by this point because he's going, mm, yep, oh, great. You know, it's just it's just a boring video that you take on your phone to, you know, like to keep your kids interested. You're like, oh, I'm videoing them. Then after the swing set, his like the girls take him to this apple tree and they're like, Oh, and here's the apple tree. And they bend down and they're picking up these large apples off the ground. And the dad is like, oh, wow, are are there still any apples on the tree or have they all fallen off? And they point up and they're like, oh, yeah, there's still some apples on the tree. And he's there like feigning interest in it. And then you hear one of the little girls saying, what's that in the background? And the other little girl saying, what's what? And then the other little girl says, it's an insect of some kind. And the dad goes in with the camera for a bit of a look. Mm -hmm. And you see this insect and it's kind of stuck on a branch. And then you hear its wings buzzing on the branch. And I'm just going to tell you, like, it's 2008. This video is blurry as fuck. But he's got the camera on this insect. And it's hard to make out what he's saying. But he's sort of like, what is that? What is that? And then one of the little girls is saying, I don't know. And then out of nowhere, it just flies off the branch. And you hear this little girl going, oh, my God, in a really panicked way and not joking. You see this insect thing fully in the air. And it's this tiny humanoid shape that's (laughs) flying with these huge gauzy kind of transparent wings it's got these long spindly legs and it moves in a really fluid way I'm telling you it is not like a doll because it has movement the legs are moving everything's moving Mm -hmm. and the dad has the camera and he's like "Ah!" and he starts running away and you just see these kids piss bolting off And you see the creature flying off in the opposite direction and they are just legging at all of them. And the dad is there panting going, (laughs) truly freaked out. And then he looks back and the thing's long gone. 
honestly, like this video has more than 4.2 million views. The comments are turned off, which I actually think that's annoying because I fucking love the comments. The thing that's really interesting about this is that this guy's YouTube account, it has a YouTube playlist with some shit tracks on it and a video of Bucks Fizz with Jay (laughs) Aston, right? (laughs) And then this video, that's it. The dude is not someone who's like into the paranormal. He's not like making things up. It's literally just some shit YouTube account. No offense. No, no, but come on. It's a shit YouTube account. Okay. When you see this footage, it does look a bit like a dragonfly. Yeah, I was going to say. Until it flies towards the camera. And then you can clearly see a humanoid shape Uh with wings. Can you see a face? Yes, you can see a face. <gasps> What's the face like? Is it horrifying? It's like an alien. I'm not joking. Oh it looks goodness. like a little fucking alien face. People are saying it's a fairy. And obviously I call bullshit on the fairy because, you know, <laughs> I don't really believe in fairies. But honestly, I actually don't think this is faked footage because the kids are really natural Um you can see through the the wings of the creature. They're blending in. Like it, it's, mm. I, I really, really feel like there's something in it. And I don't think it's like a click, scammy, clickbaity kind of yeah. video. I want to see it. You should see it. I'll put a link in the show notes. Why don't you do that? I'm gonna. <laughs> but obviously you know that I think it's like an alien a tiny lost little flying alien. But people, I've got no answers here, but I'd love to know what you think. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah, he's so bored, that dad. Apples. It's a shame. Oh. Oh. You can't really see what it is. Uh, that looks that looks made up. That's made up. That looks like an animation. I don't think it's made up. I think it's real. <laughs> Why do you think that it's made up? I got really freaked out by that video. The whole thing feels a little bit made up personally. I love the story though. And I have heard so many stories of famous incidences where they've seen, where children have, it's always children, never a dad, always children that have seen fairies and have run for their lives. But this is like way back before film cameras, before, you know, like the adults are now dead or very, very old. Well, so you think the dad has like put this hoax up. I feel like he's got some sort of new software and he's managed to put a little like overlay on top of it. I reckon Gretchen, my daughter, would be able to do some sort of animation a little bit like that. It wasn't very clear, was it? No, but then you saw the legs and the body is moving and you see right through the wings, which made me think, hmm, I don't know. It's not like it just didn't feel like green screen. The kids seemed really natural. Obviously, you're calling bullshit on this. I call bullshit. And I love fairies and I believe in them. Well, I'm calling tiny little lost alien. Oh, wow. Well, you know, it's interesting today, Michelle, because a lot of the stories that you've told, I think, play with perspective. Not just the perspective of what the person viewing the monster, each monster or creature that you've spoken about today is, like your perspective of what you're looking at, but the perspective of each thing. Is it a dragonfly or is it a giant alien? Is it a wombat or is it a blown up tick, like an experimented on tick or flea that's now been blown up to being the size of a wombat? Is it a kangaroo or is it a rabbit running across the motorway? Or is it an alien or a chupacabra? (laughs) Who knows, Johnny? Suspend that disbelief because I'm going to wrap up today's episode with... My last stories oh, okay. because we cannot do an episode about rare sightings without, without talking about Bigfoot. the Yeti. Okay. Well, it's the Yeti. It's a, You know, Bigfoot is one of the big two, but this is all about the Yeti. Okay. I'm going to talk about two sightings that have been in the news in recent-ish times. Wow. If you don't know much about the Yeti, it's a creature that's part of Nepalese folklore 
they believe the Yeti lives in the Himalayan mountains in Nepal and Tibet. And basically, they're like these big, massive apes. So hugely tall, lots of shaggy fur, bit apish. We've in the done face. An epi- a whole episode focusing on we have Yetis and, and Bigfoot. And I and if you haven't heard, I'm going to put in the show notes. Put the, the link. link in, Shelley. In February 2016, a skier who was skiing in Formigal in the Pyrenees in northeastern Spain posted some pics online with the message. Strange animals spotted in Formigal. What the hell is this? I've seen the pictures. The pictures are of this huge, white, apish kind of creature that seems to be running through the snow, through the trees, off the piste. So my guess is that the skis were out for an early morning ski tour or something. Mm. Obviously, like these pics went viral with loads of people immediately going, it's a Yeti, it's a Yeti, because... I do think that people have a soft spot for the Yeti and they really want it to be a Yeti. Other people thought, oh, it could be a bear, which having seen pictures, I think, no way is it a bear. It looks too human-ish for that. The guy who posted the pics went online saying, and these are his words, we've told the ski resort, but they haven't taken us seriously. He says, I bet there's something on the loose out there. I know what I saw. (gasps) I know what I saw. I know, they always say that. It's such a great line. Even a a former Grand Prix motorcycle road racer called Fonzie Nieto. Love that name. What a great name, yeah. I know, the Fonz. The Fonz. What's poppin', mighty guy? (laughs) Well, he had something to say about it all because he went on Twitter and tweeted, is there a bear in Formigal? Be careful. Others on the internet thought that it actually could be this animal called Snowflake who was an albino gorilla who had lived at Barcelona Zoo from 1966 to 2003. Well, they thought it was Snowflake back from the dead. Oh, he died? They didn't just release it into the wild when they were done with him? Well, they said that he was dead after being put down because he got diagnosed with some unusual form of skin cancer, which, Hmm. quite frankly, if he's an albino gorilla, makes sense. But what if he wasn't? What if it's Snowflake? But anyway, all the online Yeti talk was what everyone was going on about. So I took a closer look at the pics to see what I thought. And what does your critical eye say? After studying the pics, to me, dude in a furry suit <laughs> holding a torch. <laughs> that is what I think. But do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. Because who am I to make that claim? The funny thing is that after the news broke, yes. this story went viral and a spokesman for the resort confirmed that a thorough search had been done of the area and they wanted to reassure skiers <laughs> that they'd spoken to the witnesses um, to identify the area and after combing it they found nothing, nothing. Because therefore there's no cause for alarm and their security is guaranteed the next door neighbor's resort was getting sick of Formigal getting all the visitors and wanted to put a dent in their <laughs> reputation. So they sent out Mario from the kitchen dressed in a suit with a torch, like, torch, <laughs> like you said, just to go and scare the bejesus out of all the people from Formigal. So they'd come over to what's next door to Formigal? The Pyrenees somewhere, some other village. I love that there could be a Yeti living deep in the Pyrenees. Do you know what? There could be anything living anywhere in our giant, massive, fantastic world, couldn't there? Well, just ask the Russians because in 2015, there's a dodgy, shaky video that was posted by a group of Russian explorers that shows this hairy, humanoid, Mm. apish type figure hulking its way through a snowy forest. And they're claiming that their video is proof that the Yeti exists. This group are from southwest Russia. They are avid Yeti hunters. Red flag right there, right? So they claim they captured this footage while investigating local Yeti sightings. So first of all, they say they heard snow crunching behind them. And then one of the cameramen, because they had cameramen with them who just happened to have the camera on, turned around and managed to capture the footage of this hairy beast. Now, I've seen the footage. Do you know what I think? Guy in an ape suit. Yep. (laughs) Absolute bullshit. Because this figure, it's not tall. This it's just walking around. It's not even scared. It's just walking calmly away. I don't know. But I will tell you that I did find some interesting info online where in 2014, two strands of hair 
were found in a remote region of the Himalayas. It was believed that they belonged to the Yeti. Scientists did DNA testing on the hair and it showed a 100% genetic match to a polar bear DNA from 40,000 years ago. Oh. So Oxford scientists who did the research now think that actually there could be some kind of hybrid polar bear that does exist in the Himalayas, which could explain all these sightings of what we call the Yeti. So there you have it. Science could win out again. And that's all I got for you today. That's incredible, Michelle. I absolutely loved our deep dive into mysterious creatures all across the world. And rare sightings. Rare sightings. I love it. Oh, wow. That's fantastic, Michelle. Listen, I'm going to see you in a few days. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm just going to remind everybody, please get on and vote, vote, vote. We need you. We need your votes. And apart from that, there's only one more thing to tell you, and that is wherever you are, whatever you do, just, just keep, keep eavesdropping. 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 Eavesdropping.